Hello, Mark. I'm just tired of writing, so I'm going to do this real quick. Yeah, that whole argument. Well, okay, this is how I see that. Um, the usurpation of people who are previously living on the land has no beginning or end. It has been happening since the beginning of time. Uh, the Anglo-Saxons came to Britain and wiped out the tribes who were there before. So where do you start? Where do you draw the line? Where do you say uh, these people are more entitled? The natives, the natives of south of the southern cone, uh, were absorbed. We don't. The Spanish culture ha went about it differently. We see it as having absorbed the people that were there. We didn't create reservations. We didn't separate them. We don't continue to talk about them. This has been a cultural import from you guys that um, thinks in terms of segregation and has, uh, we didn't have a Mapuche problem before uh, your Bristol human rights organization started to try to school the world on what every country was doing wrong to what group of people. I mean, people um, go about their integrity with, um, with, uh, with, their, with their citizens differently. You have to respect cultures and how how they go about maintaining their country together you can't be invasive and be telling you treat your own people the wrong way that's i mean that's basically the one of the most egregious um invasive disrespectful characteristics of the anglo-american culture you think that you can tell people what how they behave wrongly and what, you know, where, where you, this has been, I mean, it's, you guys have been called on this for a long time. You think you have the moral authority to tell. Uh, and what's really sad about this is that you are succeeding because English dominates the media communications of the world. And what it's causing is people, is monoculturalizing the world which is like monoculturing in agriculture. If you get rid of all the varieties of a potato, a potato or a corn, uh, what you have is a weak strain of sole surviving um, characteristics of only one um, variety that later becomes uh, unbalanced, you don't get mutations, you, um, you're vulnerable, it's, uh, being invasive and wanting to control others always leads to error and flaw and chaos and crisis and collapse. You have to respect other nations as equal because every the world starts with the nations a people create for themselves. It's their home and each home has to re respect the other one in equality. If, um, you know, this is, this is horrible. Argentina was a place where um, people friendly and inclusively, amicably mentioned your characteristics of race or what have you, religion, but it was never something that people feared and walk on eggshells and judged and criticized others saying you're a racist and we're going to pass laws to stop this. You know, that was that ugliness that has become the states and, and England is this way. You all, Oh, God, uh, you're fixated on how we talk to one another. It's crazy. We didn't have this situation. And the thing is that it becomes insidiously invasive. Then it becomes a tool by which to justify. And that's why people talk about how your culture militantly in, invades and then creates a separation so that it has a, invades culturally so it has a, an excuse to... Uh, later invade militarily to by choosing one of two sides um, to pin against each other. I mean, and the whole world is witnessing you what you guys do with Venezuela and South America. I mean, how long do you think it's going to? The world is a sphere. It's not going to. You know, this is not. Eventually, it's going to come collapse on your asses. More and more, the 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 great country, the the more populated countries of the world. Are, de are slowly growing in their animosity towards this mentality towards other countries propagated by the Anglo-American culture. You don't see it. You don't see it, but you know, we see it. We see how more and more countries are starting to be 
friendlier toward South America, the Middle East, to China, to Russia. We can see it on the media. Why do you think that's happening? Soon, more and more people are going to start, and pretty soon they're going to start saying, acting like they want to gang up. And you're going to get more defensive. Anglo-American culture is going to get more defensive, more aggressive. It, you see it. You're actually seeing it as we're living today. Because he's... Anyways. So, going back to the discourse of um, how we supposedly wiped out... Um, our, the, the Spanish... The Spanish and Argentina didn't do anything different to what every other country in the American continent did or England or Spain or Russia or China did in their own countries as they were growing. It's such a, it's such a puerile, dumb accusation, uh, uh, argument for this group. But in any case, uh, it, would still does, it doesn't seem to propose um, um, a solution or an answer, does it? So what the answer needs to be is that the world, in order for the world to congenially start talking to one another and equal and equality, and fairness among nations, uh, and and to respect it, you got to draw a line somewhere, because there is no line in this. If you take it to the to what you're talking about is a human characteristic, a problem that we have of prejudice in in, in inventing our our hostilities through the visual through the identifying somebody we don't know their name so we we vent our anger on calling them black or British or Argentinian or or Jewish or what have you um, and it's just a problem that has been with humanity all along people who are uh, more inclined to feel united socially and culturally um, I don't know I, I feel that your culture has exported this this uh, this being prone to want to categorize and you know it's no coincidence that the, the, the aristocracy and the class separation uh, is very uh, characteristic of English society you know you kind of want to point your finger at all the other countries and tell them how to separate themselves uh, the if it only stopped there but it doesn't stop there uh, then it becomes a reason to um, you know it's like you're you're passively, instead of being like Genghis Khan, <laughs> you know, or uh, some murderous dictator of the past that they are mi militarily invasive, England is invasive with their mind. They want to they wanna get in there and then they so weakly, um, in, their, in their thinness, in their, in their, uh, in, in their um, invasive judgmentalness, they expect to dominate you with the word, with manipulating the definition of things. With it's 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 creepy almost, you know. But it it is no less of an invasive ultimate result upon the sovereignty and the cultural societies of other countries. Uh, it's just a more it's like sophisticated type of disrespect. It's a a, a different kind. Of, your culture is fascinating. Your society is totally, your mentality, your political mentality is, is fascinating. But it, unfortunately, it doesn't harm any less the world than the world has always uh, had countries harm and usurp and destroy uh, one another. It's no better. You, you're simply good at, you know, uh, cleaning your tracks and then presenting a new narrative and... Um, Countries in the past have not done that so well. They have they've boasted their brutality. You want to be you want to look like you're angelic and good, but in reality you end up stabbing, you know, running your knife through the other person the, the same and uh, through their back, just like uh, the next guy does. You just have a different style about it. But anyways, I got derailed again. Um, uh, so the only way to draw a line in this problem is by finding a time in history that we have concurred as a world face to face in a circle so to say um, to define and declare our nations that's the only way because otherwise we're always going to have one part of the world is kind of more advanced and recognizing each other's nations while these 
we don't recognize the tribes running around Africa, you know, and this has always been a problem. The world was advancing and progressing different parts at different rates. When is the point that the world has finally said, um, okay, now we are all, all our territories are defined and have a representation, and that representation can get on an equal plane, on a, on a level circle, face to face, all of us, and talk about whatever is at hand the world needs to talk about, or agree on rules of engagement, or what have you. And what did that start? That's the only time that you could say, well, we have um, a leveling, a leveled plane from which from what, from which plane, no, from, from, and from that plane, we can all together continue to concur on resolving matters or administrating matters for the future. It's a sort of a, a plane that serves the future and the past. With uh, The first time that we have that plane is pretty much during the creation of the United Nations. Now, isn't it a shame that we have created uh, an organ, an, an organ, um, an organism to um, to to put all the nations of the world on an equally uh, represent capable of representation plane, and instead it is lost, corrupt, and twist you know, slanted in the favor of uh, the interests of groups and and it's uh, well uh, we know all the problems with the United Nations. Uh, but you know that's what we got basically that's what we got and that should be our start we have to reconfigure it redesign it uh, re uh, represent uh, the pe the world's peoples demographically in a perfect distribution and uh, input um, uh, in you know and feedback um, uh, capacity to uh, communicate and come up with ideas in an altruistic, well, in a in a in a globally, um, um, all-encompassing, fair uh, perspective and ma uh, philosophy towards instead of thinking of right now the United Nations thinks uh, thinks in terms of the political thinking of certain countries and the, the it's all it's not fair. So people say like uh, look at what happened to Chile and Bolivia with uh, the, the International Court of Justice. It's ridiculous. I mean, what is the point of having uh, an organization that says, okay, humanity is really challenged and fails, has flaws in bringing justice and creating justice, kind of bulldozes forward with a more powerful and, and wealthy, um, you know, carrying forth and all the other ones crumbling along and stringing along and and the world sort of stays together the best it can with some countries leading and some countries needing. And so the United Nations would be created to solve the problems of inequality and injustice that are the failing of our institutions, the failing of our, uh, of our systems, of our, of our wor the wording of our international laws and the principles and, and, and values of our international laws. That's what, that's what the purpose of a, a, a world organization of uh, global intelligence for humanity's problems should be, correct? And so as such, the International Court of Justice should be an organism that says, okay, what we have doesn't work. We've got to really look at the whole situation here and see what would be fair beyond, before uh, the, the, the creation of countries even, but from even uh, from the very human level of what we all understand is Justice and the and at the human, um, at the human dimension of, of our of our natural morality, and so as such, you look at the conflict with Bolivia and and Chile, and um, it's more than obvious. <laughs> There's nothing that says Chile was there before. Bolivia was there. Chile even itself says it. Julie says, yeah, we, they kind of look the other way. They know they stole the land. There's no conflict here at all. Chile will admit that they took, and then they would say, well, you know, whatever, now it's ours. What, what they did, so here the International Court of Justice is given the, an easy case to resolve and bring justice and show its efficacy 
Instead, what does it do? It uses the established laws that that countries with administrative power England introduces administration that later favors its own interests and it's all you know corrupt it's all wrong and so you know the Argentines of course they're not going to jump in to international court of justice because it's a it's an instrument for Britain to establish you know you come into its its court you go play at, at, at its home at its home stadium right that's what the United Nations is. It, they designed it according to the principles that they were already carrying and developing, and so we make an instrument for the world, and the world has to play according to our rules of the game. And so, of course, it's playing in their under their terms. And some cases are made are serve as uh, tokens of what would appear a neutral justice, like some island was given. Uh, independence, you know, thanks to the International Court of Justice from Britain, and, and now we see we prove that the United Nations is fair. And the but really, when push comes to shove, and things are important for Britain, well, wouldn't you know that it just sided with Chile, which is like siding for Britain when it comes to uh, the the Northern Territory that used to belong to Bolivia. It had a perfect chance to. Um, so anyways, uh, and it just blew it. It just totally uh, made a mockery. Of, Britain is making a mockery of everything. It's it's calling the, the Falkland Islanders right of self-determination and like a human right and some, you know, in reality, um, it's all a story, it's all a narrative. And it's exploiting the, um, the easy, gullible, uh, passion hearts of the general public with with terms that seem easy people everybody wants to win with those who are right when you give somebody we you know um like slogans like do what what you want with your life we're for your freedom of um freedom to um freedom for to do what you you know and things these these slogans you know these uh um um, sort of uh, mottos are very attractive to people who are uneducated and basically don't, you know, and then you, s so everybody wants to get on the, the winning wagon of, of a fight, right? And so Britain is just absolutely um, smart and intelligent as, as to create a narrative uh, about democracy. It's not even a democracy, it's a monarchy, for crying out loud. But the monarchy is, is stashed, it's hidden. It's 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 secret Oz. It's a secret. Instead of having God, it has the you know God save the Queen, and so the, um, that's its little umbilical cord that they stash, and it, it's all. <laughs> anyways, <laughs> I know this probably doesn't make any sense. Um, <laughs> I've been thinking about this way too long. Okay, so in other words, the answer for this problem is that. Um, uh, I don't know, because your Lord's stance was not yours here in Dolph, the history lesson, amigo. So patronizing. So, like, um, <laughs> guys, you're such snobs. You're just like, such, you know, fa and the internet is a pretty fascinating place to see, to see exhibited the human psyche and psychology because we're not held accountable. We're not being judged by anything real. I mean, basically, all that's judging us is the screen looking at us. And uh, it's just really interesting because you really, there's, there are consistencies. There are consistencies on, on how you talk to people. And I experienced it firsthand because for a while they couldn't tell if I was American or Argentinian. And so I could see that the same person, for example, would treat me a certain way like condescendingly and quick to abuse or, or name call or say, ah, you don't know what, you don't know anything about, about anything. You don't know how to run a country or blah, when I was Argentinian. But when all of a sudden I would, I would throw in, well, I was born in LA, I'm American, all of a sudden silence. And then there nobody would say anything, you know? And it's like, oh, and then some people try to be friends, try to be friendly. 
Okay, so the, this is, I mean, the internet is truly fascinating in this sense. And um, it's really unfortunate that um, I can see how patronizingly um, you're dis discarding, you know, and, and, you know, this guy Brad also also does the same thing. Whenever he gets angry, his, his um, MO for uh, ex uh, d demonstrating his offense is laughing. And this is very common. It's like to humiliate. It's very common of the British to um, insult you. You know, to try to knock you at the at the knees by making you feel worthless and not worthy of respect, insulting, offending. You know, this this whole like kind of undermining down down there and the, and the ego because it's all about the ego for you guys. You know, um, so um, wiping out the race. So we didn't wipe out our race any more than than the you know people being thrown in jail, disease, and wars are wiping us off. <laughs> wiping us out today you know there were they were wars and these people were not wiped out they were integrated and until you started having more influence in our culture we called everybody Argentinian you know and we the fact that you were descendant from Mapuche or Guarani was just something colorful to be added to the the, the citizen to the person we didn't have a problem we didn't have um, we, if you were black descendants, we knew what happened. You, we knew that they all left. They were treated badly, the blacks, and very few were left. All, no, we didn't hide anything. Argentina raised its children telling them how horrible we were to the Indians. This is the construct of evil people that discriminate is yours. It's not ours. It's yours, and you want to apply it to our country. You have no idea what you how insidiously um, offensive your culture can be to people who are actually well read and understand you think you you have this idea that you're more intelligent or better read or more aware of, of you know it's this horrible characteristic of your culture it's it's just it makes you like not want to be friends with you you know it's like shut up already kind of thing you know uh, we didn't have this problem and then the problem that we did have however is not is it comes from colonial periods from all you know never having learned to put before anything our sovereign integrity in the heart and and not see uh, Europe and North America the United States as something we needed to catch up to and so we were half our politicians were always sort of betraying the idea of wanting knowing what to do want to with their own hands for their own nation with the hands of their own people as normal nations do half our politicians were kind of hoping we'd get some extra help or learn to be like the europeans or the americans and so that was our problem and that's actually what opens the door for people like like you're like if, if we were a, a relationship between people you would be the person that takes advantage of the person who doesn't believe in themselves you know, you see that, you see that they're willing to just give away something and instead of guarding what they've earned, they're just, yeah, sure, have it, you know, and all trust. And so you're like, okay, well, let's take, you know, let's take advantage of this, this fool, typical English, this foolish, foolish person, this, this inept idiot, right? Um, and unfortunately, Latin America feeds into that, not so much because they think they're idiots, but because... Um, they have never seen themselves in integrity. Even Japan and Germany, which were obliterated by war, um, never lost a sense of themselves. They are, Germany was re rebuilt by, by its enemies, and so was Japan. But they would never, in their, in their government house, as they were rebuilding their country, regardless of all the influences and and, and uh, political principles that they uh, adopted in order to conform to the expectation of the British and Americans, they never, it never occurred to them to say, well, let's go, or, or, or their, their ideas were never loaded with the, 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 the motivator of let's do it like the Americans do, or let's see what America or Britain 
you know, expects or let's do it because Britain and America expect it from us. They, because they have self-love, they're old cultures that have integrity and even even when they were so destroyed, I make these two examples because they would be, you would say that they were not satellites, that they are satellites of, of the uh, Anglo-American victory. But in reality, um, they never lost a sight of their own integrity. Well, unfortunately, Latin America is very weak in this. We have it, but we just don't think it's, it's that important. We kind of let it sleep. We don't pick it up. We just let it sit there. And it, not until um, there are critical moments do we have governments that rise and try to defend uh, our sovereignty. All of a sudden they get scared. They realize that we're not we're all, you know, loose and sloppy all over the place and comes uh, a sovereign, uh, a left sovereign nationalist or what have you. That uh, And of course, the Anglo-American culture, which is Anglo-American governments, uh, hate all countries that have a sense of protectionism towards um, where they would demand respect for their resources and sovereign integrity and financial uh, integrity, protectionism, and you know, which is not a bad thing actually, because you guys have it. You know, if America and England can, it's it's just they sell their economic systems and political systems as open and free, but in reality they're make, they're taking care of their own countries, aren't they? They're making sure that what is important does not get messed with. Well, Latin American countries do not know how to make sure that what is important doesn't get messed with. And so, because you guys see this, you um, you take advantage of that and then fool with uh, the promotion of certain ideas that you see are being bought by our societies. Um, it's been very bad, very very destructive to the to the future of many nations, and it's so sad how the world has lost. Uh, imagine Iraq, uh, a, th a healthy, thriving nation with all its ruins perfectly restored. All its little. Imagine the Palestine villages thriving with all their uh, ancient um, um, village uh, Palestinian architecture preserved. The, the Israelis, it's all you guys. You, it's all like, is it you guys or is it the money that has gone up to your head? the industrial corporate power that it's all about the money it's the m money is driving the world crazy you think that it's the only way to stay afloat in a in a in a failing world intelligence is to just stay as powerfully as you can through economics and finances and so and of course that is always going to um, you know do away with thousands and millions of human lives that do not see the that as uh, the prowess of handling finances and being capitalistically rich and powerful as uh, the necessity or a key to existence in this world. But those people who already have it and enjoy that distance of, of having more power and more abundance of material wealth around them um, see that as the, 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 the boat to, to get on and <laughs> to not sink with the, the inadequacy and the mediocrity of, of a, uh, a never concluding and always half failing civilization, humanity. Um, but it's really sad. I mean, to see the, the destruction of the German cities. I mean, the Germans attacked London because they didn't want London to go into a war. They didn't, I don't think they wanted to destroy England. They, in fact, they wanted to find favor. They wanted England to see that they were related races. And uh, politically, they were being opposed by the British. So the Germans were bombing uh, out of pure war philosophy to discourage, to, to stop, to uh, uh, whatever wars attempt to do. But when it came to destroying German cities, Germany was already losing. Uh, but, well, you know, you say it yourself, so that um, to break the, their will to fight. 
which actually means to break the will. They in, when that sentence, to break their will to fight, transcends the circumstances of the period. It's so loaded with the the notion of of uh, these ha the, this race has always been too strong. Uh, uh, it scares us, so we want to kill it, so it never rises up again, kind of thing. And that's not a, that's not a mystery. Hey, that's not a mystery, is it? Um, so much destruction, so much destruction, so many, so many cultures. Look at what you've done to Africa. They're confused. They, they you put leaders that will follow your systems because it's all about you continuing to draw in the, the what you can use from these created countries their resources their money or the whatever you can you can uh, you can and so just to satisfy that you get the person that will agree with you of course if you look at the human nature who agrees with somebody who wants your friendship and who has a lot of money the person that wants to use that person's money Correct. The person who wants to use that person's money, the puppet governments that you install in all these countries, um, of course, are that kind of people. There are people. They're not people with a sovereign heart that uh, know what's righteously noble and good for the long term of their people, and have a balanced sense of life and and leadership. No, there are people who are trying to take advantage of a situation for selfishly. And so these are the people that you install in these countries. You're destroying the world. <laughs> destroying the world. You're destroying the world. It's, it's, it's incredible. Uh, you know, I always, I always write, um, you guys don't know how to put down the gun. You invented the rifle and once when a person picks up a gun or a rifle everybody freezes it's the most unnatural invention I'm not saying you did because I know it existed gunpowder and weapons existed from way before even England existed um, but to have a philosophy a philosophy based on military power means to become a warring nation which means to become a warring society is based on the weapon on the armament and one of the things that m people who endorse uh, the right to bear arms in the States hate to hear is that the problem of war is the weapon. The weapon itself, having the armament. Humanity has to learn how to give up having the weapon. If it ever wants to... First it has to acknowledge its limitations. And it, does, it cannot handle the ability and the capacity the prowess of its logical intelligence to invent things and not harm itself ultimately or along the way with its inventions. It has to realize that it can never reach or match nature and will always be uh, not do justice by nature or humanity and it fails. It cannot extend to all that is necessary, not yet anyways, for it might the day it realizes its own limitations and the, after realizing its own limitations it may realize that the first thing it's got to do is be truly willing to uh, to put down the gun because the natural reaction to the weapon is um, plain to understand you have a group of people and everybody's getting along, we're all equal, we can all raise our voices and, and, and scare a little bit when, when, with our voice and our demeanor, but the other person, you know, it all balances out socially and other people may, might gravitate towards that person. Hey, you're talking too loudly to that person. Explain to me what you're trying to say. And so it gets diffused and that person that was felt harassed uh, relaxes because some people got next to them and helped the, the overly aggressive person explain himself and then he gained confidence and he talked back more strongly to that person that was first talking loudly to them and so it, it comes back and, and they learn to match that person's um, enthusiasm 
with their own confidence and so forth. So humanity can, um, through our, because we're a society first, through its social interactions, learns to be coexist and be copacetic. The minute somebody introduces a, a gun in the group, it ruins everything. People get scared, they don't know what you're going to do. Um, then all of a sudden the person plays with a trigger and uh, people start acting like some try to please the person with a gun because they're scared and they're going to try to manipulate them and make sure that they don't, they're don't they not chosen as somebody as a target. Um, some people look for with us to, to, to get together with and maybe um, plan or conspire how to get rid of the gun or the person holding the gun. It, it creates evil. It, it throws everything off balance. The, the best lesson humanity could learn is to know how to put the gun back down and apologize and say, I didn't mean to do that to the group. Um, the humanity hasn't learned to do that yet. Uh, but if it does learn to do that, it will have meant that it finally realized that it doesn't know how to handle its own intelligence. It wants to, it, it has ideas and idealisms that it enforces and wants to force others to go by, and it results in children being um, scheduled to have a mutilation uh, operation because they should be conformed like silly putty to a uh, the opposite gender because the parent or the kid itself got it into his head that he should be the opposite gender. He feels like the opposite gender and so now we are going to operate that kid in a transgender operation and give him hormones and medicine for the rest of his life. We're just that brilliant. you know. So we have to acknowledge that humanity is too willfully uh, zealous in applying with arrogance the productions of its logical intelligence. And humanity thus, civilization has demonstrated more, more consistently than anything that all its inventions ultimately cannot match the harmony that nature or humanity would prescribe for itself. And so when, when it invents a medication, it seems to do good, you know, it launches it when it sees it cures some people, but in time we always see that the collateral effects, and it turns out that it was actually causing another a new disease. All our inventions, uh, our, our, our first buildings were collapsing on our heads. Uh, our weapons had uh, chemicals in them that were killing soldiers. All our, our inventions fail. And it in, that includes our social philosophies and, and idealisms and and moral constructions of logic and that we write down in books and then we believe we have to study and go and live by and build nations and societies those are also our inventions and they also fail and so until humanity realizes this problem that it needs to have a grip on the limitations of all its inventions and all its logical intelligence it won't uh, be able to find the, the, the right level of humbleness and when it does it will start having something that constantly checks itself to uh, that all the things that we do are truly are actually for real true to the species to the to the social health of the species and to the 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 natural um, form of the of the the physiological natural form of the species we will be the masters of ourselves we have never been the masters of ourselves uh, we have given it to God. We have said, well, well, you know, we don't know. We're just messed up. Well, there will always be evil that comes up somewhere. You know, we're, I don't know, that's God's will. We're just screwed up. We were, uh, we can't handle it. We accept our own uh, f flagellating our, ourselves. We have accepted that we just kill ourselves and, oh, well, sorry, that's just the way we are. It isn't. We just haven't ever uh, reached and, um, uh, um, um, obtained the, an intelligence that truly understands the design of our species and uh, truly how our minds socially and individually as, uh, as in all its natural psychology uh, functions, works, how our, the simplicity of our design has uh, always escaped us. Uh, we have never uh, really known how we are. Otherwise we wouldn't be incarcerating people for example because 
uh, we would have understand that our, all people are the production of the world and the society that has raised them. We would feel accountable as a single uh, collective and we would start by healing the environment, the circumstances and the things that create this behavior, um, these radicals in society and also we would be masters at finding the natural means that the mind would socially heal and bring back that person, recuperate, recover that person from all, all of their psychological stray and and uh, you know problems and uh, disasters that we have created in their the world has created in their head, um, you know. But we're obviously not there because we want to hang people and blame them for everything the world does wrong. Um, we try. We have little, pro you know. Europe seems to be was hope for a while, you know, trying to get... Norway still only has a, a ceiling to, of, of only 25 years uh, of incarcerating people, you know. England tried for a little while there, it was like no weapons, uh, gun, police officers, you know, but you know, it's a little attempt. We're too busy in making sure that others didn't get ahead, weren't we? We were scared when we, we saw that there was a political system that was uh, thinking about the collective of humanity rather than the, the, the gain of, of, of banks flipped out. Oh my God, a political system that's really going to think about benefiting all equally, that will mean that people who control banks will no longer be powerful. <laughs> we lost it. We had to make communism the enemy. Of course, ca communism was not very well designed because instead of putting um, the world um, at the center with humanity populating it, um, it put government and so there was no uh, place to obtain the satisfaction in another human being um, to motivate us um, to push forward while capitalism puts the satisfaction in another human being through uh, personal gain and competition um, and uh, sharing with uh, socially the wealth with other rich people or other people that also have all the toys or are in whatever category of society you manage to share that wealth and you know but at least it puts it in, in, in the, you find reward in the people and you are able you're free to sort of put your main concerns in uh, your family members in the best of cases um, and maybe in, in the people that matter to you for in your in your uh, climbing the prof profession or the the financial ladder uh, you know at least it's another person that you're putting your your uh, satisfaction and, and trust or or dependence on instead of government so it for as so that knowing at least that we were better uh you know gave us uh, leeway but then socialism you know really the okay i'm going to i'm going to finish now um with how i see socialism oh did i answer the question basically the line needs to be drawn um on the creation of the United Nations, that by drawing the line on the creation of the United Nations, um, what we have are two countries that already existed that are still here. I mean, two countries... In other words, in order to be able to comprehensively resolve all the situations and all the conflicts, uh, reintegrate our nations without the presence of foreign bases and conflictual and disputes over territory and what have you and bring the world to a normal natural living state of simple uh, sovereign uh, nations with their people and their language or groups of nations with each one with their you know shared language maybe what have you uh, is to start from a place where all those nations are present the ones that are no longer present obviously are cannot be represented you can't reintroduce a Mapuche nation artificially in the United Nations uh, when it doesn't exist just because of an idealism. You think that it sh they should exist 
And so you, you recruit somebody to represent them, but in reality he's not representing anybody. No infrastructure, no store, no history, no social history, no cultural history, nothing. It's, it's forging an idealism. Um, this is basically the big era of humanity, forging idealisms onto itself that are totally unsubstantiated by any history or anything that has not ever happened. We're nuts. We're crazy. We're just crazy. We're so sure that we have to direct, direct and tell, write and describe what we want to... Uh, eh, God. Anyway, so in that, in that level plane, you have already Argentina and Britain existing. The, since both countries are existing since the creation of the United Nations to this day, you have all the stuff that ties into their uh, com their confrontation about the islands still here. So you're able to talk about the islanders and the creation of a of a, a government to, to to make this colony seem like an autonomous, uh, which is. It's a, it's England brought a, a transformed its colonial mentality into something more advanced uh, that would become a satellite instead of so it has a thing about this way it can expand and it has more um, more uh, back and forth more uh, reciprocal re relations instead of colonies that were a primitive expression of expansionism where you used that you now there that prop that territory it has evolved that into overseas territories, uh, autonomous territories, and it adorns them with all this equal human rights. And, oh, maybe some people with all the best intentions, but in reality, ultimately, the original intention is for the use of the ruling central government to benefit by the, uh, the extension, the outpost of an, an ex uh, by the outpost of an extension of its government and society and culture which is a totally unfair expansionism because what you have is uh, one country if all countries are to be equal, people are going to be equal born equal and nations are can are going to enjoy equal respect with one another there have to, there has to be a common rule of of territorial politics you can't say well we're our nation is about uh, setting little offshoots all around the world uh, and while other nations are saying, no, we're, we're happy with what we got. We don't need to create another little Argentina anywhere else, you know, uh, which is a majority of the countries in the world. So uh, that's why Britain always gets told, criticized as, um, uh, what do you call it? Something left from the past, something that is a, a, an, an old mentality, a feudal, colonial, imperialistic mentality that refuses to get extinguished like Spain and Portugal and everybody kind of got it you know that's there is a problem with wanting to have land outside of your own land um, intuitively they understood no Britain insists because it wants to say everybody has to drive on their left everybody has to continue doing that because we and we are right we're always going to be right and we're right and nobody's going to make us change our mind and so now what you have is a country that is uh, you know the only one that drives on the left, the only one that, that it, it just stubbornly insists that it did not make an error, that it's not harming anyone, that's not being selfish, that it's not taking more advantage or, um, or uh, gaining more than other countries, and it does not, it refuses, it does, rejects all criticism or judgment or even objective intelligent analysis on the truth of its um, unfair system of having um, a net, a network of around the world. The world is not. Uh, it, the, the world does not belong to the strongest, or the the smartest, or the wealthiest, or who gets there first, the fastest. It doesn't. The world starts belonging to all human beings equally. We all came to this world. We came to the planet humanity as it started spreading out of Africa and, and building little tribes all over the planet humanity appears with an equal right to live all over the world that means all of us have the same right to live anywhere in the world of course at this point we have 
uh, nations are, but let's just go still back. Nations occur naturally because we're bonded by being able to relate to one another, our language mainly, and the distance, not, um, uh, not being so far that we don't continue to maintain the same customs and cultural uh, customs um, and social customs and so forth and plus the language and it usually results in a nation that's our natural uh, sort of organic human unit the nation um, and in still in the creation of these nations we still all have equal right to the world so it's either all nations have satellites and military bases in other countries, in other continents, or none do, if we're going to be true and uh, utmost uh, righteous in our respect towards our fellow human beings, our respect to the in political intelligence of other societies, uh, we would not be some nations with territories and satellites and overseas in other nations, not at all. Uh, so this is why Britain is basically erring and at fault and is racing to try to give the Falklands some kind of um, worthy... So it, it, it's not originating from them, so it's trying to build it so that it, the result is like a country that originated from itself. It's trying to beat the clock, in other words, and trying to silence Argentina um, while it's doing it, but by, by, in several ways. In the meantime, it's really trying to, you know, put money and, and then give them the wallet and say it's yours and, you know, now you're going to look like a country in a few years and they won't be able to say that you don't have the right to be there anymore. That's basically, the, uh, 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 um, in a nutshell, what the Br British policy is for the Falklands. Um, and uh, the thing is, we have already passed the plane of equality among nations. Of course, it's failing. It failed when it had to judge between Bolivia and Chile. It should have given Bolivia uh, a, a right to uh, access to a part, at least, at least two-thirds or half of that territory and said, well, Chile already developed so much, they deserve something. You know, that's if they were devoid of the systems created by the Anglo-American uh, political uh, education of uh, and the creation of the United Nations and the International Court of Justice and, and uh, we didn't and we had truly a, a fair, just, objective um, detached uh, um, perspective on the human reality of countries you know, that's what the International Court of Justice wants. So, of course Argentina is not going to have uh, England get away with establishing a precedence through, uh, uh, because they would, they don't care. <laughs> they will not care what Argentina had uh, at that time on the islands, what they did, how involved they were, uh, how little Britain was involved uh, in, in living on the islands, or, uh, and, and the fact that they were, uh, the flag was brought down militantly uh, without uh, in political engagement and an usurpation in all its definitions was committed these things will just be ignored just like the the was ignored in the with, between chile and um and bolivia who knows what's going on uh, there who if there was bribery or if there's fear a lot of fear a lot of not wanting to be poor a lot of countries in latin america don't want to they don't want to uh fall behind they want to be in with the where, where the money is, and so that it continues to split their pro this their countries with the same uh, set of problem that I described before. But you know, basically, um, England is being uh, abusive to um, to the world. It, it's a and and when you add to that um, that it has to create an explanation that sounds. Um, 
righteous, like it's honoring the rights of the Gibraltar. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> come on. You know, oh, you don't, you didn't want Gibraltar there because it's a strategic military place to have a huge airport um, <laughs> where you can, you know, control the Mediterranean, the entrance to the Mediterranean. It only takes a, a, a skirmish for, for America or Britain immediately to threaten, well, we'll have to resort to military power then. And then you say that it's not a military objective, but it's about the people's right of self-determination for the, but of Gibraltar. But then, if anything happens, all of a sudden it's like you're, you know, shipping the bombs over there, right? Come on, I mean, when the world needs to become honest, nations need to be start becoming honest and sincere. We have to start playing on the same, on the same page with this, and and stop this bullshit of of presenting one explana official explanation and then humanity being the slave being dragged by these false and phony uh, defin definition, official uh, statements in competition with each other to see who can um, create, <laughs> who can make the, 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 the most intelligent, uh, the winning uh, device of, of politics to beat the other one. Meanwhile, we're all suffering. We're all dying of famine, and people. Some people got like ridiculous amounts of unnecessary wealth, and others are starving. Well, it's all a result of the sep the sep the lying, the separation of the artifice, of the invention of of the uh, political idealisms created solid and competing with other uh, fronts of political explanation with people who want to live and have to abide by this written record, uh, static reality which has no regard for the human living reality the organic reality of every day until the day that we uh we learn to design governments and systems of of, of political uh administration that are uh true to the living day-to-day uh, desires and form the human design of uh, the design of the human form and its society uh, where they're always going to harm us all our designs of government administration political uh, the masks of our instructions of political ideologies will always harm somebody not the people that know how to grab all the blankets for themselves you know but it will harm the people, uh, the, the, the majority of the people, some way. Um, and, you know, one of the things that uh, that needs to uh, humbleness and uh, rea realizing that we have limitations and learn to put that gun down and, and not be afraid to, okay, let's talk about what really happened here. You know, I always said, if Britain didn't have it all, it's this whole strategy laid out on why the war and what it wants the islanders to see it as and what their narrative is in both England and, and just everybody said, okay, okay, we're not going to expect and pretend to put a narrative anymore. We're just going to sit around the table and say, okay, let's look at history. Let's see what happened here. Let's see what happened. This person came and yeah, indeed, the Argentinians were da 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 da, were doing this and that. And, they did have a governor, they did have, you know, they were talking about it in Buenos Aires, what to do with these islands, you know, and we were too, we were in London, you know, wherever, you know, talking about it, and, you know, we had other situations going on, we weren't so close, and we weren't as uh, aware of, of its uh, in, in, impending uh, belonging that they might have as Argentinians and, and talk about this whole thing very objectively including the arrival of the islanders even if we say the islanders were obviously brought uh, to shore up uh, England's presence and therefore the Argentinians could not just sail over and take the islands again uh, or reclaim the, claim the islands again for their country and even if we acknowledge freely and comfortably, really, uh, an objective and truthful description of, of history of the history of these islands. 
I don't know what everybody's so afraid of because it would still lead to other recognitions like, uh, you know, Argentina sold out. They kind of, they maybe had, they could have built a case if they had stuck to it and said, no, we're not going to be your friends. We're not going to have your your, your, uh, your financial help uh, and your weapons or anything. Uh, we want to resolve this situation. Those islands are ours. You know, and it didn't do that. It always said, well, you know, it's more important. They're too powerful. They're too strong. We, we have other problems we've got to worry about. But nothing is more important for a people's heart than the land they live on. And so the, the idea of, um, insofar as uh, the, uh, the, the notion of country and, um, and home and family life and everything, the very beginning, our base, our fundamental basis in the creation of our societies is the territory that we live on. So the principle has priority. There is a prerogative on both nations to resolve a sovereignty dispute before anything else. And so um, they didn't, and even though it got neglected, there, it still would be there. But Argentina kind of kept pushing it to say, we still claim it, but we also kind of not make it a priority. And Britain was very smart because it did make its priority. It acted and pretended like it was easy and it, it could, it's willing to look at it in the future. But when you say, we're willing to maybe talk about this later, you're saying, we are <laughs> for you, that can only make sense if you establish, for now, we're still here. So the priority of sovereignty was always the, the critical ordering of, of, uh, of, 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 of the political thinking in the matter was um, better um, thought out by the British, obviously, and in fact they dominated what ha how this whole situation developed, the Argentinians kept, had half of a right for a discussion and argument, but they didn't make a point of saying, well, no then, <laughs> we're not going to talk about it later, we're going to resolve it now, because that is the proper order of a nation. You don't, you don't say, we're friends, even though you're, you're you know, you're a trying to convince my son to be a a gambler or a, a thief but we're friends anyway it's just you know we'll talk about how you relate to my son later no that's not the way that uh argentina should have accepted and so there's as you talk about things and though you could argentina could always say well okay but we're still we never let go of it we were lousy about maintaining our self-respect are, are, are prioritizing and ordering things properly politically in our engagement about uh, towards the conflict but we never let go of it and that is true they never did so there would still be a place to talk about it but in the end the more things that both sides talked about eventually Argentina would have to come to a point where it said well and the islands are there now do we especially after the war they will never to simply, they will always want to be something, you know, of their own. Maybe there was a chance that if Argentina was very passive about um, about um, sovereign authority on the islands, maybe in fifty years, a hundred years, eventually they would have melted into a population like like the Welsh did and, and the Scottish, or whoever it was down in Patagonia. But after the war, that's not going to happen. So. Uh, there is that now so I you know they would say well does Argentina actually want that does it want to have a place maybe it wants to embrace the opportunity of um, of inventing or creating a type of uh, sovereignty that truly lets since taking advantage of the scale and the latitude and the weather and the habitability Habitability, habit, 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 habit oh, the uh, how conducive it is to settlement. Um, it could say this is an opportunity that we could retain sovereignty, but the scale of it is such that they could really be independent. They could really make a little nation 
in all their right, their own culture, their own language, uh, be even freer in this sense, in this regard of making their own uh, whatever they want, in, uh, minus Britain, obviously, but as but more British than the British, and more uh, uh, Brit in their infrastructure than the British, even if they wanted all the freedom they wanted within the uh, sovereign freedom of Argentina. They would have that opportunity, but the Argentines are not very creative politically, apparently. Um, and so because that would be the that would be the most sensible proposal for the islanders and for the islands because the the dependence the proximity the dependence on the continent is um, un, unavoid how can you say you cannot exclude from considering the huge difference it would make to the living on the islands and to the future of the islands and the islanders to just be able to back and forth with the continent for whatever they need <laughs> to grow lumber so they can build um, uh, to even have access to another country of, in every other way um, and designed in a way that never compromised that never actually changed anything that is possible it is possible it would be challenging for uh, at a, a larger area a greater larger population and a better geography where there was um, um, a lot more ability to self-sustain because uh, you know as far as different variety of, of uh, of topography and uh, flora and what have you, possibility to grow different things further north, in other words, uh, because just like Britain compromises or colonial other colonial countries like America and France and whoever else um, compromise, ultimately the heart of the leading head of a nation, because there's a, there's always that point where Oh, but wait, we're under the queen. Oh, but wait, we're under this other country. Oh, but wait, we can't exactly there because that is, you don't have the entire 100% sovereignty to yourself, which has to do with what I explained, why ultimately the world must be all equal nations, um, is not so demanding of a situation, may never be so demanding of the Falklands because it is limited in its geography and you know there would only be so many people especially the more we travel and the more beautiful and uh, uh, the rest of the world comes into the the TV sets of children growing up on the Falklands uh, more likely it will be that people will want to go live elsewhere where there is a season <laughs> you know, a warmer season sometime and so um, what that would create is always a, a sort of a cap and uh, of course what Britain is doing now is artificially pushing swelling past that cap by attempting to create a huge disproportionate fishing industry a disproportionate or to what would be a nation to what would be a 3,000 population nation disproportionate oil industry um, uh, riding on the on the dichotomy or the hypocrisy of saying that they're it's the, it's a nation it's their own nation but you know we kind of they're somehow they they're a big nation with a with a big wallet <laughs> or or rather a, a lot of leather for a big wallet somehow they got all that leather and now they have this huge wallet and how did they ever make that wallet well you know <laughs> Britain has something to do with it but um you know, so it, it is a, 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 a hypocrisy in a sense. Uh, but let's say that it succeeds reaching a certain extent. And, um, and you know, what would you have? You would have probably people that, like Alaska, uh, where people, or, I, you know, northern places in Norway, I don't know where else, up in Russia, those islands out there above Norway and Russia, where people go just to work 
um, in Siberia. They just go to work, and you know, they that's what it be, would start becoming more and more of as this these industries become. Uh, and they will need a refinery because it will make no difference. It will make no sense to pump oil and uh, I suppose take it to other refineries, but um, I don't know how that whole industry works, but I suppose that oil can just be loaded and then taken to another refinery, but at some point they may decide that they want to be more, for for them to be more uh, independent and richer and uh, they would eventually want their own refinery, I would imagine. And so the, the prospect that is being proposed is that they become like a little uh, industrial archipelago just so that they can beat Argentina in the dispute. Just, you know, so Gaia, uh, Jonathan Lovelock, I think he's still alive, but if he wasn't, he was probably, was probably rolling in his grave crying because the idea of, of harmony and Gaia balance uh, he was he was the father of Gaia, and uh, along with the, the 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 forum of elders that gave rise to the notions of ecology and balance and humanism and in our way of going about the development of industry and commerce. And here goes England and turns an island into a, an industrial plant just because it wants to beat Argentina. When the irony is that. In the natural Gaia sense, nothing would make more sense that the islands are part of Argentina. If you, for a minute, remove the idea of what Argentina means to you, or what Argentina is, or what it has been, just whatever country is there, in other words, that it would be part of that country that is there. Um, you know, for its own more com most comfortable living, even if you want to live in the beautiful, cool Falklands, surrounded by beautiful nature, cold, <laughs> beautiful nature, uh, you would want to, uh, you would sure welcome and be grateful that you have a, a bridge to uh, a continent with so much variety and so much potential. Uh, but of course, all that is obliterated because of what has been has become the notion and of course all of that is educated everything is educated in, in civilization uh, everything we believe and think and how we reason and the elements that we use to reason and, and the structure that we reason with everything is learned and educated what Argentina is thought of as right now um, makes it almost impossible for but Nothing is impossible that we invent, and we have invented all our ideas in all our countries and all our systems of government and administration. So to turn on a dime is actually, there's nothing at all preventing us from turning on a dime. Nothing at all. Um, tomorrow we can say, okay, let's forget about this and let's start again. Let's look at what we got here. There's nothing that says we cannot do that that we cannot say stop the world let's look at what we got here what can we do what do we want well Argentina wants f f dignity in a restored for one thing because it's all about you shut up you don't you don't have to talk because we have the guns so you shut up about what what happened to you who cares right this is this is what Argentina gets for a hundred and seventy five years um, or eighty seven years you need you need money don't shut up! Don't bother us! You know, and after the war, the, the islanders inherited that same thing. You know, it's like, um, anyways, and so they basically want to feel that. And how do you restore the dignity and the honor of a country? But but by uh, allowing them to, if not recuperate, at least to start. Uh, Putting into their of their own seed, their their the making of their culture, their language, their people, their you know what all countries are and want for themselves, and to share with each other, to be a normally respected country with all of their virtues and our attributes and characteristics, and so 
that is actually what addresses um, you know it has become it has become a, the islands are yours or mine uh, confrontational tug of war because we have been inept in knowing how to talk about the history and the development in a fair, just, and equally pers regarded in both perspectives discourse. Um, and so it started, we started pulling, yours, mine, yours, mine. But in reality, the conflict is made of two completely different things, like a man and a woman, you know, a woman bears child, uh, has a sort of a more circular, more collective, intuitive a sense of of of, of, uh, of digesting and and um, collect uh, and um, you know her her intelligence and a man is very linear. It's like we, we're going that way. We plow forward. You know, we do or we don't do, and kind of thing. Uh, or comparing, you know, two different foods. You know, beef steak with. Um, you know, vegetables. There are two different things. The the conflict is the encounter of the rising of a new nation that wanted to include the islands in its territory, and an empire that insists on this belonging to them. An empire insisting on these islands belonging to them confronts a nation that says, "No, we want these to be part of our country." So there is no like you need translation in between there's two different points now the obviously one of the reasons england kind of doesn't want to talk about it but doesn't want to talk about it is because the notion of a nation wanting to integrate uh, islands during its formative phase during during its birth is loaded with more uh virtuous principle and morality, even though our international law is in, in, inept and ignorant in expressing this part of civilization and humanity, intuitively we feel that's the case. While we know that imperial uh, colonialist countries have been this is trying to getting, uh, we have been trying to disassemble them, say Britain, but most countries have a kind of and, and the ones that keep colonies like Spain and Port I don't know if Portugal still does or wherever else they keep colonies it's almost like they don't really make it part of their existence they don't proudly line squares with all their colony flags <laughs> you know they have really we're all growing away from it say Britain um, and so it probably intuitively knows that it would be heading into that confrontation and it'd rather not. It'd rather not talk about it. It'd rather just hurry up and try to make these islands look and appear and convince everybody to be a normal nation that somehow quickly got put together during the last 30 years. But, you know, we can, you know, <laughs> We can push forward. We got a lot of money in the bank. The queen's got a lot of gold. We got, you know, a lot of tanks. So, <laughs> so, anyways. But if we talked, if we talked, um, starting at that encounter of two different creatures, actually, it's fascinating. I never understood. I never understood why they don't see this as something much more interesting. Uh, to try to create is to revise ourselves, is to say, look at our principles, look at why we, how we grew from an empire, we later went to a parliamentary democracy, and from colonies we evolved our colonies into, and then the nobility of a nation that, that wants to start with all its fundamental principles of, of nationhood and, and integrity, and, and how they, these two are like, come from different periods, finding themselves in a, on a time plane all of a sudden, uh, and how do you create a language, a talk, uh, an, a, an eloquence between these two um, uh, travelers, these two time travelers, right? And the idea of uh, that uh, if we had found this peace 
uh, and, and remove paranoia and defensiveness and scorn and proud. Uh, what do you, what insults pride? Uh, insult, I guess, and uh, removed all that. The clouds would have spread out, would have cleared, and we would see how the the unique opportunity that I mentioned before that here is a situation where wait a second these islands are never going to be extremely demanding of their own uh, you know great creation like all nations want to be great <laughs> and reach the moon no these islands will probably never have the ambition to want to reach the moon because there will never be that many people that want to live only so many people because they really want to live they have a taste for that kind of in their lives the 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 amount of people a proportionately amount of people at a given time that will want to make their lives on these islands and what they can actually yield i mean do you want to just make everything artificial and, and make bridges covered in glass uh malls and nobody sees the outside anymore just to <laughs> be able to keep the create something that looks more like a like a, a country uh, in, in a warmer latitude and so you, you start people live indoors all day you know it, it isn't conducive to the average normality of nation creation it will eventually or have to be an industrial plant or have to be a a, a, a greenhouse or have to infuse a, a large amount of population to have people if you built a huge university who would go there you know um, it, it has a natural limitation and this natural ceiling that the location of the islands have presents an opportunity to perhaps invent a, a unique territory it could be an example of two countries that can work together Britain and Argentina in creating like a kid between them you know that will be obviously a country that speaks English and wants is, it came out of British society and British culture and British politics and everything but having designed a way to satisfy um, what Argentina feels is its right to also be there because they did arrive there when the islands were not consolidated as belonging to anybody alone one country specifically recognized by the by m several countries as really belonging to it, it, it never did it didn't do that until after they kicked out the Argentinians it was all fuzzy it was all kind of subject to interpretation only after kicking out the Argentinians did they decide to get their act together and you know bring administration people living there and that's when sovereignty begins so that means that Argentina does have something that was taken away from them and they did earn their foothold on the islands now how can that foothold be designed into uh, into a single territorial form a single political form which would obviously be governed in its majority by the, the islanders, the English-speaking islanders uh, and their territory who live there and the way they want to live and the things they want to do with their islands. For one thing, it would relieve this necessity to start building oil towers in the middle of the ocean and, uh, you know, and, and they could have reci reciprocities with Argentina that mm, made it easier for them I mean anything can be designed and Argentina would probably be more than happy to know hey you know it's it's our home too we can go there uh, you know we don't run things but anybody can go there we can just set up shop you know we can uh, ask the islanders if we can build something f uh, for them and we would be probably the most logical uh, contracting bid because all the materials are close by uh, a, a shared territory would not be a stress something stressful it would be uh, fascinating given that for the first time there's a geography that would ask for something like that given that there is already a people who um, have made it their home who are not 
the uh, the population of Argentina and uh, so I've never understood why nobody finds this situation fascinating I never understood why nobody says wow you know what could happen here <laughs> there's something something great could happen here actually because already the islanders they don't have to worry about losing their their islands this fear of argentina wine and when they say but well, you guys already put it into your constitution what <laughs> who's talking about forcing our constitution you guys use that to justify your fear is that why you're bringing it up you're saying that how can that ever be if you guys put it it makes no sense there's so many illogical defensive uh, reasoning statements in this confrontation that come from um, a, f a false um, discourse between uh, two sides where instead of talking about what they really are they're talking about what they have to defend they're talking about what they have to uh, attack like instead of talking about what they really are and that produces false narratives <laughs> when you listen to them I mean these groups in Facebook are are unbelievable you if somebody were to walk outside and, and, and see this there's no coherence there's no richness there's no production there's no uh, these are places that these groups are places where people come to try to shut the other one up you know to try to mess with the other one's head uh, they're not places where anything constructive or there is no interest in learning in absorbing from the other it's all rejection 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 or trying to impose trying to impose trying to impose um, it's terrible and they've been going on for six years six seven years actually so about seven years or if not more this stagnated um, pointless inner exchange uh, taking up um, people's times it's unbelievable I don't understand why they don't see something and the you know if something that somebody that uh, an islander that was that would be listening to me right now immediately would be jumping because you want that's what they they don't hear even what I'm saying now it, it is you guys who don't because you would want to just you know that's it's almost like they're hysterical and they're trying to act cool about it and they mock and put the Argentinians down in order to not appear any of this and really the Argentinians are relaxed in a sense because all they gotta do is kind of like make reference to a few things that they know are true and then have the patience to let them let themselves be insulted and walk away <laughs> that's kind of the the rundown of what the exchange is and they have become now groups where they're all basically British or dominated by the British and groups where the the Argentinians are because the British have wanted to kill the argument the discourse the, the conversation the 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 honest objective engagement of one another they, they didn't want the communication they don't want things to get talked about and of course when somebody talking is like breathing it's the most natural thing people do <laughs> to be we we talk in order to be it's right there the first the first uh, cornerstone of civilization that means that why would you not want to breathe because the air is toxic and it would hurt you why would you not want to talk because there's something that you don't want to reveal about yourself it's not because you don't want to hear <laughs> what somebody says because what you're wanting is to not talk and if you don't want to talk it means that you don't want to reveal something about yourself so that's you know that's it hope this was useful arrivederci